one of these days I'm going to learn how to use this new platform. Hi, everybody. It's Clarissa. You are in the limelight. I've got another wonderful guest today. We're going to have some really uh, deep conversation around cults and what they are and what they're not and um, how to get out of one if you think you're in one. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But uh, thanks again for always this new platform. It'll take me another show or two, probably to get it 100% right. But uh, I'm loving it and it's all good. I do want to remind you, though, however, to uh, like, to subscribe, to share, uh, because In the Limelight is, uh, as you well know, it is the uh, intelligent place for entrepreneurs, for the savvy entrepreneur to get some great information. Uh, I do want to also remind you that you can get uh, all of the uh, videos, you can get the podcasts and the magazine. So in the limelight, again, it's intelligent media for the savvy entrepreneur. My friends, the Lamborghinis are on the cover of the last magazine. You can get everything again in the limelightmedia.com. So just head on over there and you can find everything. So on to our guest. Um, I don't know her personally, but I like what I know. Uh, we've just had a lovely conversation pre-show, and uh, and, I, and it's and it's one of those kind of things that's a little bit, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a touchy subject, if you will. And I want to make sure that I present it in the proper light. So, um, if you ever knew of someone that was in a cult or someone that's trying to get out of a cult, this is a lady that you are going to want to be speaking to. She is a genius in her own right because she earned her psychology degree. Uh, summa cum laude in uh, 2012 as she's a public speaker. She's the founder of 100 Years of Bliss, which is a science and research-based program that excels people's growth through habits and mind training. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in Brooke Walker. Hello, beautiful lady. Hi, Clarissa. Hi. Not far from me, actually. We both live in Arizona. Uh, she's about, I'm going to go with about a 55, maybe an hour away, depending on traffic. And I can't wait to the day that I do get to meet her in person. But um, I did want to have you on because uh, I did. I learned of you and I learned of the work that you do. I know that you have private uh, uh, consulting clients and you also uh, have events that you pull together people that um, have had difficulties or issues around cults. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So um, I spent 25 years in a cult. And so coming out of that, um, I obviously had to do a lot of work on myself. And I created, after, after doing that, I began looking around and realizing that a lot of people hadn't done some of the things that I had been doing that's where I created 100 Years of Bliss. And I wanted to create something for people. So regardless of what their background, even if they didn't come from something as um, damaging or difficult as I came from, that they would have some tools to create what most people consider happiness these days. And I wanted something that was holistic. I wanted something that was I could reach a lot of people in a lot of different places. Um, so I created a my 100 Years of Bliss program is based on um, helping people change habits. Um, and I start with mindset and then go into things like relationship, nutrition, fitness, career, finance. Right. And then- Let me take a step back, though. Let me take a step back because you say I was 25 years in a cult. And I keep doing this because my hands are freezing cold, sorry. Um, and so what you didn't, you, it was not of your own volition that you became a part of a cult. You went into this cult, which is a smaller cult, and even if we did say the name, you're not going to know who it is, everybody. It's not on 60 Minutes every six months. Uh, and so it's a cult, and it was a religious cult, probably about 200 people. So a smaller kind of situation. Again, you were taken in with your parents. Um, why is it that then you decided to leave? Did you leave your parents there, or did they leave with you? Um. I, I mean, it was a, it was kind of a slow process, you know, growing up in something like that. And anybody who has grown up in something like that, you don't just overnight go, well, God, I'm going to get out of here because you, it's like being in an abusive relationship. When you're in an abusive relationship, you don't realize it's an abusive relationship right? until you begin learning to build some of your skills. You know, I mean, I, I was a single mother with two kids by the time I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I, when we joined, I was eight years old right. and I mean, even my parents and my parents are out now, but even my parents, it's not like there was, I mean, nobody knows when they join a cult, 
this is a cult. <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody walks in and says, oh, okay, that's what we're getting into. Was you this, was this cult ever a self-proclaimed cult or are they absolutely in denial? No, nobody, nobody who's still in it thinks that it's a cult. Okay. Um, and they, what do you, what, what, dis, uh, what uh, describes it in your mind as a cult? Uh, it was very emotionally abusive. It was very controlling. Um, it was definitely, there was, there was a very clear hierarchy that, um, you know, that benefited the ministers. And there's, part of it is that there's, there's this feeding of the higher up at the detriment of people who are in the lower echelon of it. Does that make sense? Right. Absolutely. You know, so, there's, so people will be putting all of their money, their energy, and their time to this higher up. Um, and regardless of how it's negatively affecting them. Like one thing that's very common when you're in those situations is that people will leverage credit cards to pay their tithe or to pay their bills because they're tithing. You right. know, so right. you're sending so much money into churches that right. um, you don't dare not tithe. No. You can't say, hey, I just don't have it this week, or I just can't make it this month. No, because you'll, well, there's always this feel, this fear of the afterlife idea. You know what I mean? Not, not this, you're doing the best that you can, which right. most people should feel like they are, but it's right. that, well, if I wasn't to tithe this week, that really might take away my ability for whatever your spiritual beliefs are. And ours were not, ours were not as heavily religiously tied as some, but there was a lot of emotional abuse that went into it. And, and, and you get, you get trained, you know, you're, your brain, I mean, brain, everybody uses the word brainwash. Right. But um, I've used the example before. Have you ever heard about how they train baby elephants? No. Okay. So if you see an elephant in a zoo or in these places, a lot of times they just have a rope around their foot mm -hmm. and then a stake. A huge elephant could pull free from that at any time. Right. Mm -hmm. But the way that they train them is they start them off when they're babies. They put this rope around their foot. They tie it to a stake. When they're a baby, they can't pull free from it. By the time they're an adult, they just don't know that they're strong enough. Exactly. That's what happens. So you get trained into these situations, and by the time you're grown, you just don't realize that you have the tools to get out of there. You don't know what that looks like, but also there's a lot of fear of what's outside of it because right. you've been right. pitted against everything outside of it, and people treat you a little bit weird because you are a little bit weird. And so it, it re- you know, it, you relearn, like, because people treat you odd outside of those environments, you're like, oh, okay, well, they're right. Everybody thinks that they're this. And Was so there ever any physical abuse? Very little. Um, there was, they would do something called processing where they would sit us in a room and usually talk to people, yell at people, or, or talk to them about what was going on with them, what was wrong with them, right. you know, things like right. that. There was an occasional time where that turned physical, but that was not a normal thing and it was not promoted. So no sexual abuse. I mean, there was some people in the environment molested, but that was not something that was allowed or, you know what I mean? I mean, it was not like something that was, right, of course. And it was, ours was monogamous. I so see. It was, not that there was never an affair, but you know, it was a monogamous. So obviously for you, there was a turning point. And I'm sure that over time and over the years, there was a, there must have been some self-talk going, I don't know if this is really right. I don't know if this is cool. I don't know if this is where I want to be. Well, what was the turning point for you? It said, okay, I'm out. I'm done. There was a couple. <laughs> uh, the first one, the first, my health kept giving out. My physical health kept giving out. Yeah. So my body would actually, you know, I really am a big believer that emotionally, if you're stressed, your body will act that out. Right. And I had to get heart surgery when I was 31. Oh, wow. um, it was not open heart surgery, but it was heart surgery. And I was fainting um, and I was having what I thought was panic attacks. Once I finally went to the doctor, they said, no, you have a heart problem. Okay. It's not a big deal for your age. Right. We can fix it. And at that point, um, I had two young kids and I was like, well, then I... At the time, I was reprioritizing my life, and I was looking around at the other people that were in that environment, and I was like, okay, how do I 
how do I not be like some of those people in that environment? And so I was like, okay, I need to handle me and my kids and figure out how I'm going to financially support ourselves. And that's when I started going to school and getting my degree. Right. You were 31 at that time. I was, yeah, yeah, I was 30, 31, right around then. When you said, I'm, up, I'm done, I'm out, was it a clean break? Nope, I left, I moved away for two years and then I moved back and I jumped right back in it. <laughs> okay, so you know, we don't always learn the first time, Brooke, it's okay, I get it, we don't always learn the first time, you know, I mean, sometimes I mean, you just have to keep banging your head against the wall until you get a bruise and eventually a bump, right? Right, and that's what I explain to people, I'm like, I, emotionally when I left, I did not leave. I physically left and I was doing some things and everything that I did gave me a lot of strength later on to when I really did get out, I got out and my family had, now my family is entirely out. Everybody is, but, the, but when I left, they weren't. And so I was kind of emotionally. Hard. Hard. Yeah. yeah. Really doubly hard. So, okay. There was a turning point. A few couple things happened along the way and right. you had one foot out, you left two years, you came back. Then what happened? I uh, jumped right back in. I had just gotten my degree. I actually started working <laughs> Started working for one of the ministers and moved into one of the other ministers. Home. Well, okay then. All well, right. When I say I jumped back in, I, I jumped back in. <laughs> Listen, believe me, I've made, uh, you know, sounds like some of the relationships I've been in with guys, but okay. You know, <laughs> we eventually, the message, we will get the message eventually. And then, I mean, that broke down for re different reasons on both ends. Um, ended up buying part of it was I was on, I was on a mission really to make me and my kids lives better. And that was the one thing that I kept going for. And the more that I moved for that, that more that it moved me out of that environment, right. buying my own home, um, getting a job that was in a better position for me. So I was really well, I mean, just the whole, you know, you're not the boss of me thing should have been, you know, I mean, at that point, I think it was probably screaming at you pretty loud, pretty loudly. Yeah. Yeah. And there was, there was relationships kept breaking down within that community. Right. So it was time to go. You finally said, you're not the boss of me. I'm out. You go back to school. I mean, come on. So from Lauda is, uh, is who, who does that? I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing stuff. So congratulations on that. Uh, and you decide to go into business school for yourself as an entrepreneur, as a coach, and as someone that helps other people um, with pretty much the same issues, yes? Yes, and that has been, that has been, it. I, I really do truly feel like it is my mission. Um, I was actually working in finance and I just, I was not happy. <laughs> and I was like, you know, what, what would make me wanna get out of bed in the morning? And I just started getting into, first seeing what other people were not doing. Um, I know that, I'm a big believer in offering things that I would go by. Right. I sure. couldn't find anybody who did what I did. Right. And so initially, you, started, I, you started up with, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. When I initially started doing this, I was not, I was hesitant to really pull in helping people out of cults and helping people out of damaging religious environments. But you know how when people around you are like, you're avoiding, <laughs> you're not doing what you need to be doing. And so, right. I have a lot of amazing people in my life at this point. And so a lot of people have been like, you need, you're, you're avoiding this and people want One of the first things is to create the alternative support system. I think that's one of the first things to do. Um, and, and you know, when you're coming out of that kind of a situation, everything is so unclear and it's this, it's, it's a jump into the dark and um, you really have to trust your gut if you have a gut to trust. And so, you know, it's been one baby step at a time um, and, uh, and you know, obviously you, you took some baby steps and then you started to run. So you created something called a hundred years of bliss. I love the name at hundred years of bliss.org. It's on the ticker tape, everybody below. So you can follow along or, uh, or, um, or go to the website when you, when you do get a chance. Uh, and you talk about mindset, nutrition, career, relationships, fitness, and finance. So you're pretty much covering, um, your, your, clients from every angle uh once they you know they've come to you and said i'm ready to make the move please you know what do i have to do what are next steps first of all why why the name where does 100 years of bliss come from 
Um, part of it was from my grandparents, actually. And I remember growing up and seeing different people of different ages age, you know, and looking at my grandparents and looking at other people the same age. And, and you know, if you see somebody in their 80s and their 90s, and this was not my grandparents, once my grandparents hit their 80s, they really declined a lot. But I saw other people their age who were still running around like they weren't that age. And I was like, well, if that's an option, how do I put that? Yeah, exactly. I want to, I want to have what he ate. Right, exactly. Um, I'm going to pull up now. I'm going to pull up your blueprint. And I want you to talk a little bit about the 100 Years of Bliss group blueprint uh, and how people can get it. So it's book walkers, uh, how to design dreams, a step-by-step. -step. What is that blueprint to build your life from the foundation up? So tell us a little bit more about that. So really what it is, is um, we all have values. My values and your values may be different. They may be the same. I want everybody to start with their own values. So that's the first thing that they put into their blueprint is their values. And then everything in your life revolves around that because where we get off track, whether it's joining a cult or getting in relationships we shouldn't be in, it's usually when we're not following our values or, right. or taking a job that takes us away from our family when that's one of our top priorities or taking a job that we don't like because we think that the money is the benefit there, you know? So there's all these things where when we're not at our core exactly where we need to be, we go and we stray into these other areas thinking that's what we have to do. So when people are working with your blueprint, are they self accountable? Do you walk through it you know, with them? What does that process look like? I have a couple different options. So my basic, my basic, very basic is, you can, because I wanted something that was really affordable for anybody, because I know what it's like to need something as incredibly affordable as you could get. So I wanted something that was, that started at the basis of, and that's where you can start with, it's still going to give you a ton of value. Right. Um, so starting at that, the whole program is online. So you actually will get, you get a blueprint, you fill out the quiz, which gives you like a baseline of where you're at, right. and then you get a blueprint. And then it tells you how to fill out the blueprint. You're actually going to go through the program. You get um, an email almost weekly, and then you get text messages every day. And that's six months. That's but it's like fun. Months. Is it thir oh. It's 30 days, right? It's 30 days. Yeah. So each but one's broken up. do something for 30 days. Come on, everybody. That's, that's so super doable. Yeah. Well, okay. Tell me about some of the um, – okay, let's go back to your uh, support groups and your 100 years of bliss um meetings if you want to call them that way uh, yeah I think there are you have two events per month on the first and the third tuesday so tell me about it tell me when tell me where obviously we're talking about phoenix arizona everybody so it's a little bit more maybe local uh unless you are doing a lot of your work online of course i know that but i'm talking about in person meetings. yeah so the goal is to actually do them where that people could come in and do it just like this 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 is what my my 100 Years of Bliss one is I do some local stuff, but at the same time, I have some online because I want anybody from anywhere to be able to join in because that is my goal is to reach as many people as I can. But for the, um, the support group, which is the first Tuesday of every month, and I'm actually doing that at the Tempe Library. Um, it's just an easy place to get to. And sure. right now it's just it, it's for people coming out of those damaging religious backgrounds. Where they can go, they can talk or they can not talk. I'm going to talk talk about my story a little bit. I'm going to talk about what I've been through. I also have a YouTube channel that people can go to in regards to specifically that. And the name is? Um, the easiest way to get to it is the bit.ly link. And it, the, it's a bit.ly link conversations with growth. Okay. Yeah, because the bit.ly link is rather long. So I just want to say, so go to YouTube conversations with growth. Conversations with Brooke. Okay, fantastic. And you're also on Facebook. That is Bliss 100 Years. Uh, you're on Twitter as well. And then I see LinkedIn, 100 Years of Bliss. Yeah, so social, on social media, obviously, you're available. Uh, uh, can people get in touch with you through your website? Absolutely. Yeah, My and my website is 100 Years of Bliss. Either dot .org, org, but or dot .org. org. They can find me on either. They're both mine. Okay, great. Um, so... Okay, uh, the last question, I guess, is were you ever angry with your parents for taking you in? And were you angry when you left or were they angry with you or are you guys good now? 
I have an amazing relationship with my parents, but that did not happen overnight. Um, I talk a lot about it actually on my YouTube channel because the whole purpose of the YouTube channel is to talk about the experiences I've had um, and what I've done to feel. Yes, if you had met me a few years ago, you would meet a very different person. <laughs> right, of course. Um, well, you've done amazing things. You've come a long way in a very short amount of time. And I think you're extraordinary. I think your, your strength and your courage uh, is something to, uh, to really be uh, very proud of and that people could take a lesson from, for sure. Thank you, Clarissa. So everybody, if you want to know more, if you're in a uh, cult-type situation or you know someone that is uh, and you need help, not quite sure where to go or how to deal with something like that, go ahead and get in touch with Walker at yearsofbliss.org. All right, everybody, uh, that's it for this week's episode. And we're going to say goodbye to Brooke, and thank you very much. Bye, girlfriend. Keep Bye. it up. Keep up the good work. Bye-bye.